There's a lot of valuable reasons to be a guest on other people's podcasts and shows. I can think of at least five. But the truth is, if you don't know why you're being a guest, you're probably not going to see the results you're hoping for, and you're probably going to stop doing one of the most valuable visibility and client attraction strategies out there. You are listening to Amplify Your Success Podcast, episode 380. And today I want to reveal the common monetization mistakes that experts, thought leaders, and coaches are making when they set their sights on being a podcast guest. Are you ready for this? Let's get started. Welcome to the Amplify Your Success Podcast. Get ready to ramp up your revenue, amplify your impact, and make your mark in the world. This is the show for experts, thought leaders, and service professionals who want to shatter their limits and achieve that next level. You're going to find out from other experts and influencers how they made it. Now, let's get amplified. Hey there, inspired entrepreneurs and business leaders. It is your host, Melanie Benson, authority amplifier and possibly igniter for expert-based entrepreneurs just like you who are ready to achieve five and six-figure months as a recognized authority. Now, today I'm talking about monetization mistakes through the lens of you want to be a guest on other people's podcasts or virtual shows. And this strategy is getting more and more traction. There are a lot of people who are interested because they've started to hear the results that are possible. They're starting to hear from podcast booking agencies and PR agencies that, you know, you need to be more visible if you want to attract more clients, if you want to position your brand as a leader in your industry, you want to be recognized as an authority, which gives you a competitive advantage. And I want that for you as well. However, just consider there are a lot of people vying for what might be considered limited availability, even though there are 300,000 active podcasts, there's like 10 times that on YouTube. Not all of those shows are interviewing people and not all those shows are going to really be in alignment with your niche, your area of expertise. So you want to really look at how do you smash it? How do you really stand out? How do you make sure that you're leveraging this platform wisely? Now, I've been uh, podcasting probably close to 12 years now in some way, shape, or form. I've been interviewing people for, you know, close to 20. (laughs) And what I have found is there are some things to do that really move the needle and make sure you get a great return on your time and energy investment and maybe your money investment. And then there are some really big mistakes that a lot of people make because they don't know better because they haven't really thought through how, you know, how to optimize the thing they're doing to get in front of new audiences. So I'm going to cover four of the most common of those monetization mistakes here today. And I also want to give you access to my entire scorecard. It's absolutely free. If you go to melaniebenson.com forward slash scorecard, you can download my 17 mistakes that guest experts make that cost them the lead and the client. And there are 17 different things that when you do those things, they start kind of disconnecting the audience or disconnecting the host even before you get a chance to be in front of your listener base. And it keeps you from being able to tap into the results that you've been promised or that you see other people getting. So again, melaniebenson.com forward slash scorecard. I highly recommend that you review it. I've given you a little scorecard to review your own process. And if you're not sure that you're smashing, that's a good thing, right? Smashing is a good thing. Uh, Each of those areas, that's an opportunity for you to optimize it and watch for the training that comes afterwards uh, after you download the scorecard and I'll unpack this a bit more for you and show you where perhaps you can lean into some mastery, some optimization that'll help you 10x the results you're getting right now. So how did I come up with these mistakes? I didn't just um, drop this into AI and ask AI or chat GPT what my mistakes are. No, I do my own on the ground research. And these are things that personally, like I've been through the school of what works, what doesn't work. And I study like what 
when I do a tiny shift or what, when I implement a certain strategy works better. So I'm personally optimizing everything I do, but even more impactful, the guests that I've had on my three different shows over the last 12 years, I started to notice trends. I started to notice people who would come back to me and say, Melanie, I got so many leads from your show. Or somebody who would say, wow, that was really powerful visibility. I landed a few clients, right? They were telling me they were getting results. And I started to notice my own reactions. Was I pulled in to what this guest was talking about? Or was I bored out of my mind? And I realized, wow, there are actually really talented, trained speakers, people who make millions in their business, but the experience they were creating through this platform of a podcast was not making them shine. It was actually working against them. And these are the same people that would say to me, Melanie, like, what are you doing that I'm not doing? Can you help me? Because I feel like this is a huge waste of time to be a guest. I'm not getting the results. These are the same people that would start a podcast and then cancel it. They would stop airing episodes because they weren't getting results. And when I started to look at the common mistakes, that's where the scorecard came from. And if I could just highlight the top four of them, this is where there was opportunity that would have immediate bang for the buck for them. Like this was low hanging fruit that really moved the needle. And again, like I've been teaching people in guest expert system and the 100K3 accelerator for six years now, I guess it is, how to implement these optimization techniques. And these are the four that when they fix these mistakes, they have the hugest payoff fast. As a matter of fact, like just quickly before we get into these, One of my clients, um, she was kind of doing mistake number two that I'll cover here. Actually, she had a couple of these, but uh, the big one was the mistake number two. And when she fixed this, and she actually learned how to do the pitches the way I teach them in uh, Guest Expert System, what she realized very quickly was, oh, okay. Like her, um, her, uh, uh, like she actually got one of the hosts who was so moved by her concise messaging that she booked her on the spot and it was a 50K gig. (laughs) So getting these things resolved, again, can have an immediate impact on your bottom line. So let me talk about the first topic. And I mentioned my client had several of the um, things that I'm gonna cover here. And this is a quick fix. This is one that almost everybody that goes through my programs whether it's 100K, a 3 Accelerator, or the Guest Extra System, both of the uh, biggest reasons why when people are coming in, they're like, oh, yeah, okay, that's an area that I could get some quick impact. And that's going from what I call generic gene to having a magnetic, compelling topic. And here's why this is super important, and it becomes more and more important every single day in this industry. First of all, there's probably a lot of people who do what you do or sound similar to what you do. And one of the fastest ways to give yourself a a visibility advantage is by creating a topic that's differentiating from everyone else. Now, you might think, well, I do do stuff that sounds like a lot of other people. And there's there are some people who will give you advice to say plain language, make it plain, make it simple. You know what? I don't think in this case that works as well. So I teach a method called the rocks method on how to uh, magnetize your messaging. And one of the things that you've got to do is you've got to create a message that illuminates why you over the, you know, 100 other people that probably sound a little bit like you. An example would be how to stand out in your market. Okay. So that's something that anybody could teach. But the way I usually have a topic around it is something like uh, how to generate million dollar visibility that gives you a competitive advantage in your unique niche. Right. So again, that's a little flowery, but that you get the idea. I'm not just talking about visibility. I'm talking about million dollar visibility, which I'm sure a billion people are going to start using that down the road. But right now, that's my fresh topic. That's what's getting me traction. And another example, I worked with a guy who 
he was a high performance coach and he was brilliant. He was magnetic, he had so much power. But when he was pitching his topics and he actually started working with me because he's like, I'm not getting booked. I don't understand what's wrong. And so we worked on his topic and he was really dead set. And he was like the three pillars of high performance entrepreneurs. I'm like, I get that's what you do. But it sounds so plain. It's it's like it's not, it just can blend into the noise. And so we shifted his topic a little bit to be really more specific, more engaging. And then he had this opportunity to pitch his topic in front of an audience of podcasters. And he got booked by like 40 of them immediately. Here's why a generic topic just isn't going to cut it anymore. And I think it's one of the big mistakes. It's probably actually keeping you from getting booked. Because if you think about it from the podcaster's point of view, podcasters are getting pitched. A good podcast is getting pitched 100 to 500 times a week. If you saw our inbox on pitches, you, you would like, your brain would melt. It's like, it's a lot, <laughs> right? And so when somebody has a really unique topic, my assistant is more likely to put it in front of me because she's like, this is really unique. It's interesting. It's standing out to her. It doesn't sound like everything else we've already done. Then the second thing is if we've got 10 people with a similar subject, you know what's going to get booked? The one that has like a unique twist to it or it sounds different. So that's one thing, but the third, or so that's two things, but the third piece of the getting you a more specific magnetic topic is really essential is you are trying to grab people's attention when they're scrolling through a list of podcast topics to listen to. So you want it to be relevant. You want it to be something that's really speaking to the hearts and minds of your ideal listenership, whatever that is for you. And so, yes, you can have a more standard topic, but you need to make sure it's magnetized so it's relevant to the audience. Otherwise, and I suspect this is a big reason why a lot of people don't um, get the traction they're looking for is people aren't even listening to the episode because it just sounds too vague. It's not it's not pulling him in, pulling somebody in, pulling the listener in. So number mis- or number one mistake is too generic of a topic. It's too plain. It's too average. It's not standing out. And this is an easier fix than a lot of things on the list, by the way. And I know you've probably looked at this a million times and you're like, I don't know what to do. Well, you know, this is where I shine. So I'm happy to help. The second monetization mistake has to do with how you communicate your message in these uh, showcases as an interview. So this can also show up in how you present in your webinar styles and your teaching styles, right? I want to just focus in on the piece of how it shows up when you're being interviewed. And it's a messaging mistake, but not the way you might imagine. Okay. So traditional messaging mistakes are your messaging isn't landing you're not getting uh, your point across. People don't really get what you do. This is what happens when you're being asked a question and how you answer it. And I call it the flooding messaging approach. So flooding basically means that when you communicate, you are like a fire hose and you drop all the goodies, all the information. And it, you know, some people might refer to this as over delivering. I literally think of it as like you talk nonstop And your delivery is so disconnecting that you're not getting people to hear the power, the impact. And it just, it's like they're, the listener has gone numb. They've kind of checked out because it's too much or it's the way it's being delivered is kind of going over their head. Now, this is a really common mistake for people who are very passionate and they haven't learned how to structure the way they communicate in a way that makes what they um, are teaching land for the listener. And these are some little tiny tweaks that have a huge impact on the listener's ability to put you on the top of their, oh my gosh, list, right? Like, oh my gosh, that was so impactful. Oh my gosh, I want to listen to this again. Oh my gosh, I want to share this with everybody I know because it it meant something to the listener. And it, most importantly, uh, they go through what I call the golden thread and they end up in intrigue. And intrigue is where 
or sorry, they end up in investment where investment is I'm invested in wanting the solution or at least staying in contact with you so you can nurture that relationship. So flooding looks like you're asked a question and you spend 15 minutes answering it. Flooding looks like I, um, I was asked a question and I just told this non sequitur story that has absolutely zero to do with the context and I've lost the listener because there's no, there's no like journey I'm taking them on that means something to the listener. Flooding is, I have so much to tell you and I, I want to get it all across. So I mentioned my client earlier and she's brilliant. I mean, she had built an eight figure business and sold it. She had experienced this life transformation that gave her a skill that is so powerful and so valuable. But the problem was when people asked her what she did, she flooded them. So she was in this one way um, kind of director type energy of like, here's all the things you need to know. And she was trying to teach everything that she had instead of building this bridge between the world that her listener was in and the world that she had a solution that would help them in. And so the solution here is to learn how to talk in sound bites to create concise catchphrases and statements, and I call them showstoppers, uh, and to have a signature framework that you can teach in a very strategic way. You're not teaching the whole thing. And this is what gets people to raise their hand and say, "I I I am intrigued, I want more, right? So this is a check for you. Like, do you tend to flood your audience? And the answer is if people kind of are starry eyed or they don't ask more questions, or they seem like they're checking out on you, this may be one of the places for you to optimize is to learn how to shift the way you deliver so that it's more compelling and less flooding. Okay, let's go to monetization mistake number three. Unaligned audiences. So you can have the right message, you can have the right energy, you can have the right offering, you can have the right of everything. But if you're in front of the wrong audiences, it's not going to work. And I learned this personally many years ago when I was in front of an audience that was not my audience. And I li- literally, I, I had this great talk, but the audience was not my people. And they, they were checking out on me. And I was doing a favor for a client. I had come in to do a training for his community. And I was like, oh boy, yeah, this is a painful learning. <laughs> right? So Uh, I had a client who she was brilliant. She was a service provider. She was an accountant and she was brilliant and she was a great speaker. She'd learned how to speak powerfully and she was doing a lot of podcasts. She was using a booking service and her previous coach had said, get in front of new audiences. But the problem was her, now we'll talk about this fourth one in a minute, her client journey was very specific to a particular type of business owner. And she was in front of audiences that was not that business owner. So she was attracting a lot of leads that were not able to say yes, because they didn't have the problem or weren't willing to invest the money for the solution. So being really cognizant of the audiences you're in front of is super critical. By the way, this is the very first thing I do in Guest Expert System, which is my on-demand training. And we also spend an enormous amount of time developing this if I'm working with you more directly in the 100K3 Accelerator because you really need to know who's your audience. When you understand who your audience is, you can actually develop rapport and really create connection and build that trust that really is necessary in an audience because there's relevance, there's desire. And you can speak to them about the things that they're going through. And they're like, oh my gosh, she gets me. And if you're not doing that, then chances are the audiences are going to be falling flat. And it might be, hey, that was interesting, but they're not buying. They're not doing anything because there's no compelling need for what you do. So uh, aligned audiences is, uh, or unaligned audiences is the third mistake. Now the fourth one, and this is something that, I just assumed that if people were out there being a guest on podcasts, that people would have this dialed in, and that is the customer journey. If somebody doesn't have a dialed in customer journey, 
they're going to experience what I call lead leak. So lead leak is I have these great opportunities that are coming towards me. I'm um, inspiring my my communities. I'm inspiring my audiences. I'm giving these amazingly magnetic interviews, but I don't have a journey to put somebody through. And so if they don't say yes to the immediate offer, that connection goes dormant. And or what I'm offering is not necessarily matching what I'm speaking about or what the interview's about. So there's no real relevance. Having the right customer journey means that you have some way to inspire people to invest in working with you, whether it's the investment of a time or an email address or uh, even a small offer that is so perfectly tuned to what you're speaking about that it's like, boom, of course I got to do this. What I have heard in the podcast statistics world, so there are people that study buying behavior and they really listen to what people Um, what behaviors they're taking from listening to podcasts. And people who listen to podcasts are something like 57% more likely to buy from a vendor they hear showcased on a podcast, especially if they're a longtime listener of the show and they've already built a relationship with the host and there's trust there. Because ultimately, when you're a guest on someone else's show, you are borrowing their trust, their influence, and their credibility. So if you don't necessarily have your customer journey dialed in, it's not that it's not working. It's just you don't have a, a like a, a roadmap for that potential uh, client to follow. And that's why it's not working for you. And that's something that's pretty fixable. It's just you need to dial it in. And when I, I get really excited when people go through 100K through Accelerator, and this is one of the things they're focused on because we'll dial in their lead magnet, which is that free first step. And how is that going to take them to a four to five figure offer that's a must have offer? I call it a heck yes offer. And getting that clarity oftentimes is exactly what drives the right topic, the right messaging and the right audiences. Those are four of the most common monetization mistakes that I've been seeing my clients and you know people in the industry making. And again, if you're hearing yourself in this, please just know We all make mistakes. We all have to learn how to really make this work better. And ultimately, I share this because I want you, because I know you're busy. I know um, your effort matters. Like, I want you to start seeing better results from something that works so well. I mean, this strategy works really well for me. I meet some of my best clients from the generosity of people who invite me to be a guest on their show. I have booked over a million dollars in visibility as a guest expert being invited to my partners, stages, shows, and podcasts over the years. And it continues to do well for me. And it's partially because I've learned how to dial in this whole strategy. And I'm happy to teach you what I've learned because I want you to have the same information. I want, if you're going to use a booking service, make sure you're ready for that visibility. Make sure you can monetize it. You want to sell more books? Let's make sure you've got this all dialed in so you're getting booked and you're not just spending a fortune for uh, bookings that are not coming through or even the right audiences for you. I want this to work for you. It can work. It can work way better than it probably is right now. So make sure you download the scorecard. Start there. MelanieBenson.com forward slash scorecard. Give yourself a little assessment. And hey, wherever you're listening to this, give me a little shout out in the comments. Or if you're more comfortable, pop into one of the DMs. Or you can even send us an email if you're in my email community and say, oh my gosh, I'm making these mistakes. What do I do about it, right? I want to be your guide. I want to be your support system. I want to see you adding a minimum of six figures to your business this year because you've learned how to dial this in. Thanks for tuning in today, Amplifier. Be sure to join us right now in the Amplify Your Authority community at authorityamplifiers.com and I'll share my seven proven tips to be a highly paid expert that stands out in a crowded market. Plus, we're going to keep this conversation going, and I want to hear from you how you're going to amplify your authority and make a greater impact. Before you go, please take a minute to give our show and our guests some love over on your favorite podcasting platform. Subscribe, rate, and review. 
leave your full name and I'll spotlight you and your authority on social media.